We all know what tusks are, those elongated, often curved teeth that stick out of the mouth. Elephants have them, walruses too, even some wild pigs. They look like the kind of weapon you could build an apex predator around. But here's the strange part. In all of evolutionary history, no top predator has ever used tusks as its main killing tool. Why? It's not because evolution didn't have the time or opportunity. Predators have been experimenting with tooth shapes for hundreds of millions of years, yet tusks never made the cut. Before we can figure out why predators don't have them, we need to be clear on what a tusk actually is, because not every long tooth qualifies. In biology, a tusk is a tooth that keeps growing throughout an animal's life. It sticks out past the lips. It's usually made from an incisor or a canine, and it doesn't get replaced if it breaks. It just keeps growing from the base. That's very different from most teeth, which grow once to a certain size and then stop. Elephants are the classic example. Those huge ivory spikes are actually extra-long upper incisors. In walruses, the tusks are canines. In wild boars and warthogs, it's the lower canines that curve upward into sharp arcs. That's not the same thing as what big cats or wolves have. Their long canines might look impressive, but they're still regular teeth. They stop growing, and if one breaks, that's it. Even saber-toothed cats, as fearsome as they looked, didn't have true tusks. Tusks aren't just oversized teeth. They're some of the most versatile tools in the animal kingdom. They can dig, lift, strip, stab, sense, or even advertise strength, depending on the species. For elephants, they're like Swiss army knives made of ivory. In the wild, an elephant might use its tusks to strip bark from trees for food, dig down to hidden water in the dry season, or move heavy branches that block its path. They can also break into termite bounds or dig out roots. In a fight, tusks become battery rams. But for elephants, their everyday value as tools is just as important as their role in defense. Walruses take their tusks in a totally different direction. Those massive canines can reach a meter long, and while they look like perfect spears, they're not used for hunting fish or seals. Instead, walruses drive them into the ice to haul their huge bodies out of the water. They're also the centerpiece in dominance battles. Males face off, clashing tusks and shoving each other to decide who gets the best territory and the most mates. Wild boars and warthogs sharpen their tusks every time they open and close their mouths, thanks to constant contact between the upper and lower canines. The result is a pair of blades that can open up a predator in one quick slash. They're primarily for self-defense and for brutal fights between males during the breeding season. Even stranger, the narwhal's tusk. Actually, a single spiraled tooth is packed with millions of sensory nerve endings. Scientists think it may help them detect temperature, pressure, and salinity changes in the water. It's also a display feature with larger tusks possibly giving males an edge in attracting mates. For a predator, the mouth isn't just part of the hunt, it is the hunt. The jaws are the last link in the chain between a chase and a meal, and everything about them is built for one purpose, killing as quickly and efficiently as possible. Most apex predators have a tried and true formula. The canines are long and sharp for gripping and piercing. The carnassials, those blade-like teeth near the back, slice through muscle and tendons like scissors. The incisors are small, but useful for scraping meat from bone. Every tooth plays a role, and they all work together in a precise way. Now add a pair of massive protruding tusks to that system, and the problems start to stack up. Tusks extend well beyond the bite plane, meaning the predator has to work around them to reach the target area. Imagine a lion trying to clamp onto a zebra's throat with a pair of elephant-sized teeth in the way. The bite would be shallower, the grip less secure, and the kill much harder to finish. Head movement is another issue. Predators rely on explosive, controlled swings of the skull to catch and subdue prey. Think of a leopard's lightning-fast head twist as it sinks its teeth into an antelope, or a wolf's rapid bite shake to bring down a deer. Tusks would add weight right where you don't want it, at the tip of the head. Even a small shift in weight can make these movements slower, less accurate, and more tiring over time. Durability is a third strike. Tusks are tough, but they're not invincible. 
In the chaos of a hunt, a charging prey animal could slam into them, another predator could snap them during a fight, or they could hit a bone at just the wrong angle. Herbivores can survive with a damaged tusk because they're not using it for precise feeding. For a predator, one broken tusk could permanently ruin its ability to deliver an effective bite. And then there's the energy cost. Tusks require a constant supply of nutrients to grow and maintain. For predators, energy is already a limited currency. They can go days without a meal, and every calorie counts. Spending that energy on oversized permanent teeth that don't directly help in hunting is a bad trade-off from an evolutionary perspective. When the job is to kill fast, pierce deep, and eat efficiently, evolution tends to strip away anything that slows you down gets in your way, or makes you more fragile in a fight. While no modern predator sports true tusks, nature has experimented with designs that came surprisingly close. Some were genuine hunters, others more opportunistic, but all had traits that hint at what a tusked predator might look like. The saber-toothed cats are probably the most famous. Species like Smilodon carried canines that could reach over 17 centimeters long. At first glance, they look like tusks, but they weren't. They stopped growing once they reached full size and were more fragile than true tusks. These cats used them for very specific kills, precision bites to the throat or belly after wrestling prey to the ground. The system worked, but it came with a high risk of breakage, and the animal needed a very particular hunting style to make it effective. Some ancient whales got closer to the concept than you might expect. Odominocetops had asymmetric protruding teeth shaped almost like tusks, though it was a specialized suction feeder rather than a hunter of big prey. More interesting are macroraptorial sperm whales like Zygophyceta, which had massive protruding teeth for seizing large prey such as other marine mammals. They weren't true tusks, they didn't grow continuously, but they showed how large extended teeth can still play a role in active predation. Certain primates also blur the line. Baboons, for example, are omnivores that actively hunt small antelope and other animals. Their long, sharp canines aren't tusks in the biological sense, but they hint at how extended teeth can be part of a predator's arsenal without becoming full tusks. Across all these examples, the combination of a true tusk and full-time predator never quite clicks. The adaptations either lean towards specialized feeding or toward intimidation and fighting within the species, but never toward the broad, versatile hunting strategy of an apex predator. If tusks are so common in nature, why haven't predators ended up with them? The answer isn't just about the drawbacks of tusks, it's about how evolution builds animals in the first place. Tusks usually evolve from either the incisors or the canines, and the species that develop them tend to start from a very different place than predators. Most tusked animals are herbivores or omnivores that don't rely on a precision killing bite. Instead, their skills and jaw muscles evolve to handle pushing, digging, or clashing with rivals, all of which work fine with big, permanent teeth. Predators, on the other hand, follow a different evolutionary path. Their skull shape, jaw hinge, and tooth arrangement are optimized for seizing and processing meat. Changing that blueprint to support large, continuously growing tusks would require major trade-offs. Not just in bite mechanics, but in how the skull supports muscle attachment and how the teeth line up for feeding. That's a deep anatomical shift that natural selection rarely makes unless there's a clear advantage. There's also the issue of ecological niches. In every environment where a tusked predator could evolve, there are already highly efficient non-tusked predators filling the top spots. For a tusked predator to succeed, it wouldn't just have to survive, it would have to outcompete lions, wolves, crocodiles, or sharks. Without a strong advantage, evolution tends to keep the winning designs that already work. And then there's history. The handful of predators that evolved extremely long teeth like saber-toothed cats, fill very specialized roles and often disappeared when ecosystems changed. That track record doesn't give tusked predators much of a future. Evolution usually favors adaptations that work across many environments, not ones that lock a species into a narrow niche. Put simply, tusks and apex predation have been on separate evolutionary tracks for millions of years. 
They've each found their place in nature, but those paths just don't seem to cross. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.